So welcome again to this uh, this webinar today. Just talking quickly about the uh, the dollar yen and the reaction from the the non farm payrolls result. Saying that this was the non farm payrolls reaction here, where we've got a bounce off this longer term support that we're showing on the chart. Whoops. Basically, we've had the four touches on 124.50. We had a break through the level. And then if we look down in more detail on the on the one hourly chart, we can see this was a non-farm payrolls candle where initially the numbers weren't as good as expected. So we saw a spike lower in the dollar, but people then came to think that well, actually still probably a September rate hike is still on the table. So people came buying in dollars on the dip, got a rally off this pin bar from Wednesday on the day that we broke and uh, and basically rallied straight back up to the peak and then just petered out there and undid all the, the gains again. And here we're close to retracing the losses. So just goes to show the kind of choppy environment and the change in sentiment that we're seeing uh, almost on a daily basis in terms of when the Federal Reserve actually might hike rates. Um, trust the – how is the sound? Are we, are we getting sound at this point? Okay, good stuff. Um, so we've held this low so far in dollar yen, so the yep, the uptrend's still intact, but it's um, but it's choppy. So that's kind of where we are this week: is that we're we're digesting the the non-farm payrolls result. Um, we just had Stanley Fisher, the Vice President at the Federal Reserve, speaking on, on Bloomberg TV. And, and piecing it all together, we basically don't know too much more than we did before the non-farm payrolls result. It, it came in a bit lower than expectations, basically pretty just on, you know, pretty neutral uh, change from the previous month where we saw a slight uptick in wages. Um, but jobs created still above 200,000, um, 215 precisely, but just slightly lower than the, the previous month and slightly lower than expectations. So we're not really seeing an acceleration in the UK, uh, US economy, I would suggest, more just uh, consistent. So whether, you know, it's, now it's just a matter of opinion, whether it's, kiss, it's consistent enough to justify the Fed hiking rates in September, or do they actually need to see improvement? So now, we, you know, now, we're, just, now we're just waiting for the, the September non-farm payrolls report, which will be the last one before they actually make a decision in September. This week, not so much in the way of economic data. Um, you know, we're coming into August. It's the kind of quieter season when uh, a lot of the prominent sort of market-making type bank traders um, are away on holiday. And so you tend to start getting these more kind of choppy markets, which on a short term can provide some pretty strong momentum moves, which provide some good opportunity. But in terms of longer term trend sustaining, it's not always that good. Um, so you just have to be aware of the kind of seasonality um, of what we're facing. Um, in the month of August. But, I, but we do have this, um, the, the prospect of this Fed rate hike coming, so that in itself should, um, you know, should keep markets moving. I guess the, probably the, the couple of ones that I would highlight for this week would be the U.S. retail sales and, and U.K. jobs data. You know, that's, um, you know, that's uh, really some of the most prominent you know, just in terms of, uh, again, the economic data that the Fed's going to be looking at, the, big, the economic data that the Bank of England's going to be looking at to um, decide on when to, to hike rates. So that being said, let's have a look over to the, uh, the British pound. Now, you can see this 157 has been the real trouble area, and just after several failures to close above it, we're now down in. We're kind of testing this this breakout area from the from the 10th of July. My feeling is that probably just the the multiple failures to get through here, when you have this kind of rising trend line, 
you know, in a, in a strong, consistent trend, you would see a move up to at least a high, if not a slightly higher high, to, to, to keep a consistent channel. So when you see it touch the, the rising trend line and then roll over with a what is essentially here a lower high and then test the rising trend line again, you know, it's a sign of weakness and, and a, a suggestion that the, the trend line could break. It may not, but you just have to kind of be aware of the kind of weakness that um, this kind of action possibly ensues. And so my feeling is that there could still be some opportunities within this trading zone, um, within this kind of demand zone above, these, above this low, because while we're above this low, we're still technically okay for an uptrend. Um, but I'm not quite sure that'll even get back up to 157 again. We could roll over. So again, you know, we're in a, you know, if we look at the, the weekly chart, for example, you know, I think, that, you know, we're below the 200-week moving average, but most people follow the 200-day, and we're just about holding on to that at the moment. And you can see we are making higher highs and higher lows. So still the bias should be to the upside in terms of the sort of medium-term trend. And so into that zone is you know, still generally in line with the trend, but we've just got to be aware of the kind of strength of the trend and the possibility that we might see a deeper correction. Obviously, what this... Um, this kind of bearish divergence here as well, where the price has made a, a new high, but the RSI has made a slightly lower high on these recent peaks. So that, that in itself could be a reason to see a break through that, that 50 level and, um, and maybe, maybe take us down to this low, which you can see a bit more prominently on the, uh, on the weekly chart. So... We're in a we're in a rising trend, but it's 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 more of a choppy kind of sideways trend, and there's plenty of room for us just to break this trend line and just drop down and be in a kind of you know just very much a sideways trend. So since we're in, since we found ourselves in currencies right now, let's have a look at the uh, the euro as well. There are some. Um, there is a European CPI. That's probably the next major data point for um, for, Euro, for the euro. But it's probably going to be dollar focused in terms of where the euro actually ends up. We know the broad backdrop. We know that there's still quantitative easing going on in the euro, and that's a you know kind of does cap gains for the most part. Um, and at the moment, we're just in this this choppy trading range. And so you can see again here this, this kind of breakout area from the 21st of July has supported the price so far. And we're getting a bit of a bounce. So this, this, this is Friday's. And we can see that um, after initially losing out to the dollar, well, we saw the initial reaction in the dollar was, um, was weak. Then we saw a surge in the dollar. And then the rest of the day, we saw the dollar drop off again. And that's where we can see the bit of a kind of reversal hammer type pattern coming in at this uh, just before this previous low. So it's a bit of sign of strength there, but still within the kind of context of this declining trend line. And we saw a big reversal on the 31st of July. So it's still probably a bias, I would say, to, to come down and test the low and possibly even break lower. But that will all change if we get a, a move through this declining trend line. Generally speaking, we're in a range. So it's, you know, this 115 is the top, this sort of 108 is the bottom. So down towards 108, your better chances are a move back to 115. But I think this declining trend line would, um, would, uh, would be the kind of, you know, that would be the, the trigger, I think, the sort of momentum change to, to move to the top of the range. Also keep an eye on this uh, 50 level in the RSI. That appears to be resistance. And we've seen a bit of a move from this low to make a higher low, so some indication there, there's a bit of a change of momentum. I suppose the other fundamental driver to, to talk about, and partly responsible for what's going on in equity markets today in terms of the, the higher open, uh, is that um, is the Chinese data. Now, the, the most important data I would argue is probably the trade data, and we saw a massive drop in exports and imports from China. Um, you might think that was bad, but no, we're back into this state where um, good data, uh, bad data is good, just because it um, may 
lean on the People's Bank of China, the Central Bank of China, to actually um, cut interest rates or, or cut reserve requirements of banks and basically ease monetary policy. And so that potentially is a good thing for, uh, for the Chinese stock market. So Chinese stocks closed almost 5% higher today. That's one of the best moves in a month. And so European markets are sort of following in that just about as, as are U.S. markets. So let's have a look at the, the U.K. 100. This has been one of the big exceptions, again, for this similar sort of Chinese theme, but it hasn't been following the Chinese equity market higher. Um, the, the mining stocks have been dragging the index lower for the most part, as well as the supermarkets. You, know, you may have seen an article at the, on the front of City AM um, just alluding to the idea that um, prices are falling at um, supermarkets, and that's just cutting into their, their profit, profits and revenues. So it's a difficult time for the sector. Supermarkets are down and miners are down um, just because of the commodity uh, drive and demand coming from China. So this was um, this is what we are, you know, I highlighted last week as, again, this sort of um, breakdown area from the previous peak. Um, and even though it looks like we're putting in a bit of a base around the 6500 level, you know, just the sort of choppy sideways markets that we're in, you know, there's a good chance of a kind of sell-off from there. So I did mention um, in and around Friday, I believe, that, um, you know, just given that we were at that RSI resistance, um, 6500 may be a base, but we've a good chance of sell-off before 6800, and, you know, we're getting that sell-off today. Now, it may just um, run out of steam down towards this, you know, this low from Monday. Um, because we have had a, you know, there was a higher high, there was a higher low, so it could just be a little drop off, and then we go on to make a higher high. That will probably be the uh, defining point as to whether this is just drawn to drop down to maybe this rising trend line, but it's only got a couple of touches. It's not that reliable, but but watch out for any reversal in that area. Probably just a, a move down to 6500 again, and maybe just another move higher from there. Again, just with the idea that we're not really in a trend right now. We're in, um, you know, we're in sideways markets. A few, um, a few notable UK companies reporting earnings this week. Labrooks, for example, tomorrow. Um, but. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a, a, mi a mixture of um, earnings performance and international drivers and, and and belief in monetary policy. You know these are the drivers of the uh, the market, and um, you know we have to follow which one is being followed more closely. You know when we're in and around um, what we deem to be an important price level. Let's have a look at the the Germany 30 here. You're probably going to start noticing some, um, you know, some correlations here if you haven't already. Is that, you know, again, uh, moving up towards that previous peak where we had made a high high, we had quite a sell-off, and uh, back up to the high again. But um, looks like maybe we're going to have another run down, maybe even, another, you know, maybe a sort of, um, you know, we've had the break, but then maybe a kind of a, a correction down to the low, maybe a little push below the low down to the 200 day moving average then off again again it's just um it's not the most you know we needed to push through that that high to see us to, you know, to see a strong trend emerge and we haven't got that yet it still can and you can't see it too well on the daily chart but a, a, high, a level before we get down to the low i would say perhaps is um <clears throat> it's just the you know these two peaks here where we had quite a strong breakout in the short term could look at those lows, but uh, you know, I I still tend to think that sort of within a um, you know we've actually we have had quite a strong reaction off these peaks already, but I'm not sure that will quite do it. And um, so I, you know, different levels to consider. Always there's this consolidation was the most recent area, so obviously that brings you more chance of getting into a trend the higher the the level you buy in at. But um, in terms of sort of risk reward, you know, if having your um, your stops beneath lows, be it this low down here, or be it more aggressively at one of these higher lows, you're buying lower down for a run back at the high, or to make new highs, you know, just a, the risk rewards more in your favour, but just less likelihood of um, of, get, of getting a trade. 
triggered. Mm -hmm. So I think you're picking up the general theme here is that um, a lot of the, some of the currencies, some of the equities are pretty range bound. And so you've got to distinguish your, your trading strategy accordingly. Um, even if you're trading on shorter time frames than I'm referencing, be aware, be aware and maybe you're trading trends on the shorter time frames, be aware that they, those, tr those trends are, have a quite a good chance of getting capped out at these, these range highs that we're talking about on the daily chart. Um, I believe it was the S&P that I updated today, so let's just have a look at that. You know, pretty pretty similar picture with the S&P. The S&P is looking a bit stronger than the Dow, actually. And so what I referenced today is that, um, so here's our range. You know, I, ch I chose one of the sort of lower peaks and one of the higher peaks to kind of define a sort of zone. You know, same thing down here, I chose this peak, but then also this this recent one here as our sort of general, rather than just drawing one individual line, sort of more of a zone. And just noting that for us really to have broken out of this range, ideally, after that strong breakout, we want to come back down and, and there's the previous peak. We want to bounce off there, but we didn't. We went right the way down to the 200-day the moving average. We came up, made a lower peak, and now we're right down back to the lows again. So to me, that sort of action suggests that probably we're heading back down to the, the bottom of the range again, which would make sense. So the last time we topped the top of the range, so if we're still in range-bound conditions, the next one theoretically to touch is the, um, is the bottom of the range. It doesn't always work like that. You know, look at this. This was another example of where, um, you know, people were looking, you know, buying in around these previous lows, um, hoping for the break, but it just never happened. And the more this goes on, you know, the, the more that people are going to lose faith in the break actually happening, and we, see, we could see a break to the downside. But, uh, but keep in mind, the long-term trend, of course, in equities is um, is higher. So um, never a good idea to get too bearish. We could quickly quickly look at the U.S. there just for a basis of comparison. Um, oh, well, I'm pretty short. So here you can see below the 200-day in the the US 30 and making lower lows and lower highs, looking a bit weaker, but got quite a decent rebound off of this uh, this highlighted low here. Um, didn't quite get there, but I think that was probably the. I mean, I had this line on the chart previously, and, I, and that's in and around you know that slashed the round number of seven seventeen three hundred. Found, found some buyers, but the trend with it is sideways on the bigger scale, and the kind of shorter scale is um, is still da is still down. Now, an area where so we, we talked about the the fact that there's just uh, pretty pretty sideways this markets um, in equities and FX, in some of the FX at least, the major FX. But actually, an area where there's been some some good trends, pretty much to the downside, is commodities. So, oil being the obvious one. What did I up to date today? I believe it was WTI. Silver gold. Yeah. So, <clears throat> this is a short-term four-hour chart. You know well below even the four hour 200, you know, the 200 period moving average on the four hour, but, you know, well below the um, 200 day. Now, chance of a bit of a, um, you know, again, I've used this low, which was kind of the major low that we formed after the, the big sell off going into January. We came back low, we made a slightly, you know, lower low, but only just and came back and now we're in this kind of consolidationary period. So that was actually almost more significant than this one. And so I've doing that as a zone and that's kind of where we're bouncing off at the moment. Comes in around, I think it's 43.40. So that's just um, something to bear in mind and it is, it is uh, seeing a bit of a bounce at the moment, but so far, you know, it's, it's just it's a very kind of weak bounce to the same extent as these where we get a move back into the previous lows and then roll over. 
So here's the low, break below, retest, down. Here's the low, retest, down. <clears throat> and so we're kind of looking for the same thing again, but we haven't moved that much further down and we're in this potential longer term support. So if we fail, if we get above here and we get above this trend line, which I've connected these first two peaks, we've got a bit of a move above here, but then it worked again here. I've got this trend line, so I think that would be a little trigger to show that actually maybe the, some buyers are coming into the market. Incidentally, there was some CFTC um, data on um, <coughs> uh, on on hedge funds, you know, speculators um, who actually have added to net longs in oil. Um, which is maybe not such a bad play. We're coming into these, um, you know, the previous multi-year lows, this, this zone that we're talking about. So hedge funds getting a bit bullish. They're not always right, but it's just um, maybe an extra piece of information to, to determine whether this pretty hard, hardcore short-term trend is going to sustain or not. So it could be in for reversal, but at the moment, you know, go with the trend. Silver also has been um, cratering, but again, some signs that I've highlighted uh, over the past few days that maybe we're starting to put in a bit of a bottom, because here with that spike low, we've actually not, whereas gold did put in new multi-year lows, five-year lows, silver did not, and it's held just above this spike from December, and put in a kind of small double bottom pattern at the moment, so, you know, kids, you know, these kind of things happen all the time. But if we do get a move and a close above this declining trend line and above 15, I think that adds, adds weight to the idea that we could get a push back to 16 and maybe just back into the trading range again. So maybe even a move back up to, you know, these previous peaks. So good, strong downtrends in commodities, but be aware there is a slight setup for a reversal going on. Gold. Yeah, I mean this is a it's a it's a really obvious triangle pattern that I think anyone who has a chart opening gold will will be seeing at the moment. <clears throat> and so, um, when things are this obvious, um, you know you'd, you've got to think. Well, well, the way I tend to think is that you know what is a move in the market that would. Um, that would cause the most amount of pain to um, investors in the market. And so I think what we could, could well see here is that we get a, a spike one way um, and then it just rolls over and goes the other way. So I'm not, I can't say which way that's going to go, but I've, I'm going to be a bit fearful on the first break. Um, I think if you get a close on the day after some strong break, then maybe you're um, safe to go with that move. But there's a good chance of a reversal, particularly if it, you know, within this, within an intraday. So a big spike up to one, you know, to 110 within the day could, within the course of the day, just come back down into the range again and maybe set up for a break lower. So be, be cautious of the breakouts. We've got this rising RSI trend line, which to me suggests slightly more likelihood of a topside breakout, but it would actually give us a bit of extra information if we get a break of that line and then a retest, maybe before the bottom rising trend line in the, in the chart breaks out, then that will give us an indication actually, no, things have switched to the downside if that breaks. Um, got a uh, got a question on um, on wheat. So I do have that set up here. So look a bit messy with these trends. I have not checked the. Um, you know the fundamentals on wheat, I'll be honest with you. But uh, um, <clears throat> in terms of the chart, we've broken through this, this rising trend line, but we have held this um, previous low. So definitely a good sort of low, deep value to be, um, to be buying into what is still basically a, a sideways market. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
but um, certainly the better value would be down near the lows. You know, here is a little, you know, when you pull out to this longer term chart, it's a little bit in the middle of nowhere, but we've had a few lows in this area. You know, you could say here, here, and here's a three. So it would make some sense to see a rebound from this area. And so if I had a bias, it would probably be long rather than the short, um, going against the, the recent momentum, um, just with the idea that we're not really in a, you know, you know, we're below the 200-week moving average, but the 200-day is not telling us too much. It's in the middle. So, on that, looking out, looking out to that longer time frame, you could argue the bias is slightly down, so you have to be aware of that. But I think maybe we're about to undo some of this short-term momentum. It looks like it's looks like it's slowing up a bit. So, looking at these lows. Now, we've obviously found some support here. We've pushed back just above this rising trend line again, so maybe we're looking at a false break lower and a push higher. So, potential long here, but, you know, the, the lower risk, I suppose, or better risk or reward, I should say, is probably down in the 460s. Hope that helps. So, I'm not seeing any other any other questions or any other markets to be looked at here? So uh, I think we're probably going to wrap it up. Thank you very much for attending. Good luck for trading this week. Uh, talk to you next week. Jasper Law signing out.